I don't believe in horoscopes because in that way I'm a typical Sagittarian. Um, but uh, we have here two people to discuss this issue. Uh, Dr. John Mason, first of all, who's an astronomer, as opposed to an astrologer, okay. and uh, Penny Thornton, who is an astrologer, and you write in the Today newspaper, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> now, I've done a bit of research on this, and I know that Sandra Thomas's star sign is Libra. That's right, isn't it, Sandra? Well, thank goodness for that. And um, I've just looked, flicked through the papers today, uh, our day of recording, and uh, the Daily Star suggested there might be a winter wedding uh, not far off for her. <laughs> Daily Mirror says you may receive news of an engagement, which is probably a surprise to her and her husband. And, uh, <laughs> but you didn't have that at all, and today uh, you said uh, she should be finding a moment or two to be by yourself or by herself. Is that what I said? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, are these uh, just made up at the top of your head, or is there a science uh, backing up astrology? Well, I think you have to say straight away that astrology is an interpretive art, so it's up to the astrologer as to how they will interpret a set of data. And some yeah. astrologers will have one way of looking at something or a favoured way of perhaps picking out certain things that are more relevant than others. Yeah. So you will have a difference in interpretation. Right, Dr. Mason, what do you reckon on this? You well, the reason all those columns are different is they're all complete bunk. Yes. Uh, you've <laughs> only got to look at all the newspapers printed all over the world and compare the star sign. In mm. one, you're going to have good luck. In another, bad luck. In another, mm. you're going to do one thing and another something else. Uh, I don't know how the astrologers arrive at their predictions, but I don't think they do anything more than just come up with something that's so general mm. that it might apply to some of the people who read the columns. And as long as they are looked at as a bit of fun, there's no problem. But to look at them seriously or to say there's anything scientific in them, well, I think that's nonsense. So you're saying it's a bit of fun, but basically we're all being conned? I think we are being yeah. conned, so, yes. So what do you say to that? Oh, are you a, a con not. merchant? I don't think... I wouldn't have spent 17 years of my life doing something that was a hogwash. I mean, I've got better things to do. I could be a shop assistant, a yeah. TV presenter. Well, I, I agree that money. being a shop assistant would be a better thing to do, but... Uh, as much money. I mean, astrologers seem to be far worse at predicting fortunes than they are at amassing fortunes. <laughs> so do you make a lot of money out of it? Uh, you, you're a star columnist on the Today Yeah, well, I'd like to say to, to move it out just a little mm. bit and talk about astrology as a whole. I mean, you have a great big division between astronomers and astrologers and that astronomers look at the objective yeah. um, uh, solar system, if you like, and beyond, uh, whereas astronomer, astrologers will interpret that information. Yeah. And when you're dealing with perhaps an individual birth chart, it's much, you're much more accurate, it's much more in-depth, but even so, you can take a twelfth or a part of that and start to look at it from a kind of angle from each of the 12 sides. But even if you take an individual birth chart, what possible mechanism is there from the fact that a, a planet may be in a certain position in the sky when you happen to be born could affect your whole life? Well, rationally, that doesn't make sense. No. How can a lump of rock do that? But what we also have to say is looking at it again as a kind of interpretive art, there's a lot of things we don't know yet about our universe, about our... Um, about many things. Science is continually having to change its opinion, drop some ideas and progress. Yes. And I think as we learn more of what new physics can tell us about, let's say, the seamless universe, that everything in some way is connected, eventually we'll have a paradigm that fits astrology. Mm. We don't have that yet. Yes, but well, I mean, uh, astrology has been around for hundreds of years and there's very little support, as I understand it, to, to show that it could work. In a, in well, a, you're looking for a universe that went out of date 400 years ago with yes. the Earth stationary in the middle of the universe yeah. and the constellations with a totally different idea that we have. Yeah. You'd need a good imagination to make the real patterns out of those constellations. Well, I think you brought up an interesting point a little while ago. You said it's been with us for centuries, and that's very important. Something that was useless yeah, but it's out of date defunct. now, 400 well, years it out isn't, of date. Because people still find astrology fascinating, it's effective, uh, whether you're healing or helping people, or whether you are predicting swings in the economy, or whatever mm. you may do with astrology. It would have died a death if it wasn't useful. And I think what John is saying, and what most astronomers say, they are criticizing something that they haven't really looked at and worked with. I mean, it takes years to be an astrologer, four years of good training. It takes years and to be an astronomer. Yes. And every test of astrology that's been carried out, including the 1984 Guardian survey, 1.4 million men, 840,000 women, that survey came up with no definite evidence that astrology could have proved anything. Yes, but we're still maybe trying to take a sledgehammer to crack a nut, but we haven't found the paradigm that fits it. Well, we found I the would... nuts, I think. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, I mean, at the point, I mean, I, I'm trying I... to be... Yes, I just want one yeah. more thing that I think is very important. Let's take Isaac Newton, who was a, a great scientific hero from the age of reason. Um, when he was questioned by a colleague about astrology, his famous statement was, Sir, I have studied it. 
you have not, because his day job was science, and he was a hermeticist. But what you're night. forgetting is I the three great important. astronomers who were astrologers, of which Newton was one, Galileo was another, Kepler was another, all by the end of their life were having serious doubts that there was anything in it at all. Well, I think you have to take a quantum jump from your rational view of the world. Yeah. It won't add up that way. Yeah. But that doesn't make it any the less valid. It's, it's art, but it's not a science. Yeah. Are you guilty of just uh, not appreciating there are sort of more things uh, in heaven and earth and uh, I would be philosophy. delighted if the astrologers came up with something and if one day something is proven to show that yes. this is a scientifically yes. based thing but I don't think it's been proven so far when it is I will happily come and say Wait, so. well strangely enough I have, to, I have to wind you up there it's odd that you don't agree <laughs> because I do happen to know you're both born under the same star sign so thank you very much <laughs> John Mason and Penny Thornton